What is up down and sideways, you absolute adorable individuals? It is League Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you beauties for a little special countdown. Today we are looking at the best rookie season splits years, depending on how you want to look at it. We'll kind of, you know, some guys, their first split was in the summer split, so we're kind of including spring, looking at basically a full 12-month uh, run for these rookies, and usually we do honorable mentions, but honestly, we got eight guys we're going through. There's probably another eight guys that you could talk about just barely not making this list. Everybody's going to have a suggestion. Everybody's going to have an honorable mention at this point, so put it down below. You know, feel the free to share it type of situation. These are our eight. We keep it condensed on this one, and these guys, you'll believe it when you see we go through these, these players and some of the numbers that are attached to them in these debut situations looking through, as you mentioned, not just some of these guys getting through on the, the luck factor that they come in at the beginning of the year and get that full run through. We're including kind of guys that maybe got in, maybe got the opportunity in the summer and then kept it running in spring. And sure, some of the guys on this list got put in a pretty damn good scenario. Case in point number eight is Mr. G2 Yike who, of course, joins a star-studded G2 roster. But listen, this guy had to fill the shoes of the best jungler in the history of the Western scene in Yankos. And not only did he do that, but he gave G2 an entirely new avenue and play style, picked up two titles in his rookie split, obviously went to Worlds and MSI, all pro in all three of his first splits. And pretty quickly, we said, this guy's the best jungler in EU. Which, if Yike is at number eight, I'm scared to figure out who are our impressive players all the way ahead of him because this is one of the best debuts that we have ever seen in League of Legends at the professional level. Uh, Yike steps in, as you mentioned, big shoes to fill. Yankos, maybe not the most dominant, most noteworthy of years that you're replacing Yankos for in, in that situation but still a player that has contributed massively, not just to the organization, but to the region as a whole and what they've been able to do. He steps in and delivers perfect for this G2 roster, fits in seamlessly. And as you mentioned as well, adds that additional factor that you didn't have with Yankos, with the champion pool, with some of these new 200 years of Riot design coming on through. Yike is the guy that you want to trust in the jungle to pilot it to a victory became kind of the ultimate pocket pick jungler in Europe with the Belvest, the Lilia, all these off Medicare champions. And because he was a rookie stepping in, it kind of forced G2 to maybe change what the comms were and how things uh, were orchestrated without Yankos. But no doubt, Yike hit the ground running. And even though the international events, specifically MSI, maybe weren't at the best level for G2 as a whole, individually, in his first ever international tournament, Yike was up there with some of the best junglers on the planet and more than held his own. So absolutely one of the best rookie debuts and it's con continued into his career. Even better as an EU rookie jungler is the dude ahead of him because he won back-to-back -back titles, rookie of the split in spring. And again, very similar to Yike, El Yoya goes international and Mad Lions, sure they get memed at Worlds, but at MSI and against some of the best teams in the world, El Yoya was quickly the new face of this organization. When you think about uh, the Europe, you think about the LEC in this era of what we've had, El Yoya's got to be at that very forefront of the players that you remember for these international performances, for stepping up, for being a difference maker and a challenging put down for these other squads from the LCK, the LPL that you have run into in the course of these international events. Make no mistake, El Yoya deserving of this spot. And yes, take that trip down memory lane to when he did start with the Mad Lions and what we had from him and, and that whole crew. It's a different situation, but his impact, his play right away and the pace that he could help set for his team, that was a game changer in the LEC. And look at how quickly he goes from star, upstart rookie to becoming the veteran and the leader of a squad. It's like two years, basically. It's a sped up transformation and evolution, but he brought an entirely new angle to not just Mad Lions, but how jugglers were playing in the LEC at the time. I think it's one of those things that does deserve some type of credit to acknowledge that type of situation where we are 
rec you know talking about this amazing debut situation and, and splits that come through from Elioya. But really, the story now is that he's not that hot, fresh, young talent, and he still is incredibly young. It's just that he's made this transition in his career in the organization, in the situation that he's in. And by all accounts, yes, up and down, Rocky Road, all those type of things. But he has certainly grown as that individual player on and off the rift is something that I think is undisputable to see so far this year. And we've seen him progress. And even in his rookie year, you know, stuff like Ivern, something where he wasn't going to be the featured guy to take over games. We saw that growth out of him quickly and only became more and more as uh, he got more stage time, more experience on the rift. Number six rookie to talk about. It's the saddest one on this list going through a rough memory lane. But you remember when Danny was debuting for Evil Geniuses, the 17-year-old rookie phenom. And for him, because he started in the summer split, he still won Rookie of the Year, by the way, after only playing half of the year. So we include the spring split next that he ended up winning with Evil Geniuses. And in two splits, this guy puts together a few of the most iconic plays we've seen in the LCS's history. Uh, oh, it's been no secret in the LCS. We've enjoyed Berserker ice cream, right? It's that national flavor. It's the LCK pipeline. Oh, that's exactly as I remember it as a kid type of taste. But then you have Danny. Danny is that local homemade ice cream that you find. And it is a flavor that's just so out of town that you'd never find at that full on domestic. You'd be uh, driving three chain. hours to get that flavor. Exactly. One of a kind is what we had with Danny in the LCS domestic talent that was able to provide the excitement, the, uh, the you know, flashes of brilliance on the rift that you normally only have seen from some of the best prospects and potential players that, that we have seen come through from the LPL, from the LCK. Danny delivered it as an LCS player coming on through. That is why this one's so special. And unfortunately, we all know more or less a situation where it flames out and burns out and where that responsibility lies. And that plays into why this is such a disappointing one. to find. It almost, it does make me angry at Evil Geniuses, at the organization, because Danny's still like 20 years old. He should just be revving up his career. We should still be talking about him as being a premier domestic LCS 80 carry. The growth, it felt like the sky was the limit for this guy. So again, the fact that we're not talking about beyond his rookie year, basically, because let's be honest, we never got past him being a rookie. No, and that is really the shame when you think about it and you look back at the situation. I know we've looked and, and talked a player like Inspired. You go back all that way on Evil Geniuses. He was somebody that had so much faith and confidence in that early young talent from Danny. You know, and this is a guy that has become very, you know, uh, polarizing in the community as far as how he talks about his teammates. All positive, all glowing, all confidence in what talent Danny had. My man, what we have seen from him on, you know, uh, the Tristana, the Ezreal that we were seeing from the Kaisa, loved Danny and what we got from him. It's a shame that this is the only type of list that we're putting him on. Yeah, imagine as a rookie, Inspired was saying their entire strategies were just make sure he's good laning, make sure he's fine for the laning phase because as soon as this guy gets two, three items, we know he's going to carry the game as long as we survive until then. Putting that amount of faith in a rookie is absolutely insane, especially from a wily old veteran like Inspired. So, yeah. And let me remind you, Evil Genius has had both a Danny and JoJo Pion. So, uh, uh, real how do you ruin, on Evil how Geniuses. How do you ruin having those two players on your squad? Uh, yeah, you be Evil Geniuses, man. That's the only way that you can run that one down. That is that is true evil. They were true evil. There's no genius there, but the evil absolutely there for EG. We jump back to a little bit of a happier one, even though this is pretty much the only two rookies that didn't win a title in their rookie years. And we're lumping them together because Chobi and Tarzan were the heart of the start of this Griffin roster. And we forget that initially, even more so than Chovy, it was Tarzan that everyone was saying, this guy is insane. He's going to be immediately in the conversation as one of the best junglers in the world. And even though these two didn't win a title, it was back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back finals to start their careers. 
it's almost like looking at a bunch of you know papers and you're grading it as a teacher and you're getting everybody else's on through and they've all got either maybe oh someone's using a different color pen someone's put you know star stickers by their name to make you really see it that type of thing that's what those championships do to these rookie seasons to these numbers that you are looking at mr mr uh, tarzan mr chovey they don't have that type of luxury attached to these splits the rookie splits that they were talking we're talking about the numbers the eyeball test are more than there and make up for any of those uh lost titles type of situation when you're comparing them to these other fantastic rookie debuts seasons they have to be considered they have to be put up there and be respected at a position that they're at right here because yes Chovy and Tarzan right from the very get-go showed you that they were going to be impactful players players that you are going to be talking about all the way through whether they're on your team whether they're against your team whether it's free agency and you have an opportunity to snag the talents that they are they have been mega players in the scene since their debut and uh, they were a breath of fresh air in the lck they started during that slumping skt era of 2018 and then obviously had a rivalry with skt when the super team was formed but anytime we forget Toby had an 100 KDA at one point in his second ever split. Nobody's going to get 100 KD. That sounds made up. What what we saw initially from Chovy just right out of the gates and why it was so exciting is, yes, we had been in a period where we had someone recently, Showmaker, right, to talk about rising up into that other into that top tier category of LCK mid laners joining, you know, the legacy of Faker and all these type of things. And here comes Chovy, someone that's playing the game relatively similar to how Faker would play it and take advantages from it. But he's just doing it at a level that we don't even see from the unkillable Demon King. That's how crazy it was from Chovy. Tarzan, what you saw, how proactive he was in the jungle and how he set up his teammates, that was a big change around the world for how what you had to know was going to be a standard that you needed to be compared against. You need to be prepared to tackle if you were going to face them at one of these international events. So a bunch of these guys won titles. That's great. But how about going a perfect 18 and 0 in your first full split, doing it in the LCK and Zeus? How quick was the ascension from solo queue star to uh, this guy might be the best top laner in the world? And it's unfortunate that we're talking about it in you know this year because things have not necessarily translated to that best top laner in the world so far through this year. But when you look at what you had that rookie year and what the impression is and where you were left from that point, I can't fault you for any of that. What you saw from Zeus, the dominant play, the transformative play in the top side for T1 with this new lead in that side, big time difference maker, man. It, it felt like, you know, before him, Kana, okay, this was the level up for T1, had a good world's run, lost in semis, but they were completely unlocked when Zeus came because he took so much pressure away from all these other lanes that were already exerting so much pressure and it fully felt like they had the first carry top laner uh, since, I'll throw in Khan in 2019, but really felt more so like Marin in 2015. Yes, and this is a, a team one that you need to remember has had a little bit of that carousel in the top side where they do find, you know, whether through luck or other situations, a great option, one that does succeed, one that wins them a title. But then they have to pivot, then they have to change, find something else. And especially during the lean years of SKT, uh, you know, in that later parts of the 2010s, you're looking at a squad, a team rolling on Tara out, all out. And you've seen those ones fizzle, not provide the difference making, the oomph that you knew was necessary, not just in the LCK, but for the T1 to appear as the champion. T1s that we have talked about. If you look through any of those championships for T1, you can identify a top lane solidified island who is providing you that stable performance. Zeus gave him more than just a stable performance the way that he was dominating. And all of a sudden, we got not one, but two 18 and 0 rookie seasons out of top laners moving into Hooney on Fnatic and okay Zeus sure you were talking about baby legit best top laner in the world but Huni leveled up an entire region not only does he come in as a 
unknown import commodity, but they win back-to-back splits the 18-0 in summer. And what you got to take into account is how Fnatic was competing internationally. Because at this point, the West was always outclassed internationally, but Fnatic gets the semifinals at Worlds. They go toe-to-toe -to -toe against SKT at MSI, and it's Hooney who's outplaying his way through it. Oh man, one of my favorite rookie seasons to ever go back and look at because yes, you laid it out. You've got the stats, you've got the results that mattered and put yourself in that conversation. And the other side for me, the personality that came through and was added into the scene of Hooney. It How is could you hate this guy? Oh my God. It's such a special mixture, mixture that never has come through. Unlike the situation we got with Hooney. We've not seen it since then. My man, the personality combo, the difference maker that he was at the time. It's important, again, take that flashback to where we were with League of Legends. Sure, we just talked about Zeus and everything that he did, which was fantastic in that 18 and 0. We're also remembering he had the full tool chest. He had the full toy box from Riot Games that we have been up to at this point in time that has allowed him to take something like that. You go back to what Huni was doing back in that day and time and what you saw. My man was making the most top. <laughs> He was making the most out of what was in his toy box, that's for sure. And there was no surprise, no shortage of creativity that came through. And absolutely some of the most fun matches that you had ever seen was knowing what's Hooney going to pull out today. And he pulls out, ah, it's, this is the rumble. We're going to deal with a really mega super hot rumble in this game next time around. Maybe it's the Lucian top that's creeping on through. Oh, baby. Yeah, well, forget about the Lucian top, baby, for who That's some <laughs> of the, the lower lights. But absolutely, he changed the meta and changed really how people thought of importing, especially in Europe, because he had such an incredible success. Number two on the list, you might say, how the hell is this dude number two? Because all Pays did for Gen G is come in, win back-to-back -back titles, and somehow a guy who has to fill the role of straight up the best 80 carry in the world the year before and we're left going huh we actually don't miss ruler on this squad it's insane because you can compare it to the very first one we talk about yike and his situation with g2 and replacing yankos but then you realize yes as much as i love yankos and acknowledge how all the things that he has done it's not quite the same as ruler sure he has more of that domestic impact i think than ruler uh, necessarily did on the LCK, but Ruler came through with a world championship with, in 2017, and the form that he had shown when he decided to leave at that point was world-class, top-tier, not just at his own position, but amongst all of his peers type of thing. Pays steps in, and this Gen G roster doesn't miss a beat. In fact, I think arguably improved in a lot of avenues and a lot of various statistics this was a Gen G squad that was on a hot, hot, hot path. And Mr. Pay is down in the bottom lane and his contributions, they were a major part of why that hot path was able to continue. He set not just rookie records, but records for kills among anybody in the history of LCK in his very first year on top of winning those two titles. Obviously now he's set records at MSI and sophomore year. So yeah, to live up to the hype and he was hyped up as a young challenger player no question but again to match the level of a guy like ruler on a marquee organization like gen g is absolutely a testament to the skill set that this guy has and one of the most incredible uh, rookie runs this guy hasn't even lost in the lck since he came in as a rookie so with all that you're going who could possibly have had a better rookie year than a guy like Pays. And with any list in League of Legends, you gotta take a step back, back and ask yourself that again, because the answer is probably Faker. And yes, in this case, we gotta go way back to 2013, the rookie year for Faker, where he burst onto the scene. And within a matter of months, people were talking about this guy as not just the best mid laner, but the best player in the world. Frankly, it's right away. Faker was my introduction to League of Legends at that point in time because he was so good, so transcendent compared to everybody else and what had been happening and what he could do with the tools that everybody else had. He was able to create something magnificent that was different. He was getting the attraction of the outside world, outside of just esports at that time. Remembering you know, the, uh, the environment that we were in back in the early 2010s, 
this was a game changer. The way that Faker played and the type of attention that he brought to the scene, you know, pays breaking records all across the board. Fantastic steps in with all these sorts of expectations and pressure and everything else and doesn't miss a beat. The only possible answer that could beat him is the outlier of all outliers, the greatest player of all time, who just so happened to have arguably the greatest rookie season of all time as well. The way that he steps in and how impactful his performance, his mindset is for T1. You don't have the SKT dynasty that they have built without Faker in the mid lane and being that reliable, that impactful, that early in his career. And it's easy now, after he's had all the success, to talk about the dynasty and Faker's impact when he's there. But as a rookie, this guy's a rookie in his first ever world championship coming into this event. All eyes were on SKT. Everybody just wanted to see, oh, who is this Faker guy? Let me see him now internationally if he's actually good. And in an international debut, everyone's going, this team's the favorite. This guy's going to be the best player at the tournament. We've never seen him play, but he's the best. And he delivered all the way through, man. That's the craziest Exceeded thing. Exceeded these insane expectations. Again, coming from that perspective at the time where it was outside of esports, you know, kind of going, oh, yeah, whatever, sure. It'll, you know, he'll be good at a video game. How, how impressive can that be to see? And you start to understand it instantly when you see the difference between him and any of his counterparts. And it wasn't that any of his counterparts weren't good. He plays plenty of top tier legends in the game at the time and was able to handle it. Calm cool, collected as always, the unkillable demon king. Faker has got to be the king at number one. His boy impact in this Hall of Legends thing says it best because he played with him on that rookie roster and he himself was saying it really felt like Faker was five, six years ahead of his time, ahead of the rest of the competition, which is absolutely insane if, you know, obviously that's impossible to quantify. But even impact saying that, like Faker was just another beast so it's just another list where we get to put faker at number one but that is it today for league unlock eric and mark here with you beautiful people as always thanks so much for hanging out and we will catch you on that flippity flip